Welcome to Conversations. I'm your host, Ron Coons. Thanks for spending some time with us this weekend. Really means a lot. And joining me this segment is Jane Buckner. She's the president of Benaroya Research Institute here in Seattle. Their mission statement is to advance the science that will predict, prevent, reverse, and cure diseases of the immune system. Bree is governed by a volunteer board of community members focused on making sure that the vision and the mission all stay intact. Their scientific approach involves basic discovery, translation, interventions, and integration of analysis. That's a lot. So I decided to grab Jane and let's really break down this massive concept and nonprofit right here in Seattle. Again, thank you, Jane, for joining us this morning. Uh, Can you just start from the very beginning? What are you guys doing and how'd you start? Yeah, well... The Benaroy Research Institute is an independent research institute, and we've been focused on studying immune diseases for over 35 years. We're a group of scientists who are really committed to translating fundamental understanding of how the immune system works to human diseases. And, And some of the diseases that we study are things like type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, multiple sclerosis. So diseases where the immune system has made this mistake and instead of attacking bad things like infections, they actually attack healthy tissue and then cause disease. And so the Institute has, um, we have 325 staff and we have 25 different labs here, you know, and there are people who study fundamentally how the immune system works, which is complicated. And people who are very interested in trying to understand once we know how it works, what's gone wrong with people of autoimmune diseases and allergic diseases. And then we actually do clinical trials. So we try to go and treat patients based on the knowledge we have. And so it's this kind of long path to the basic understanding of how the immune system works to all the way to changing people's lives by using that knowledge to intervene find new therapies, and also hopefully diagnose people sooner and give them better treatments. Can you go into more of uh, kind of applying the things you guys learned? Let's say you've, you know, you've done a bunch of research, you realize that these two things are linked together. How are you getting out into the community and kind of uh, affecting that change? Yeah, so I can give you one example of how our 35 years of research has gone from fundamental understanding to actually being out in the community. So one of the things that uh, our founder discovered early on was this genetic link between type one diabetes and why certain families, that disease ran in families. And type one diabetes is the childhood form of diabetes where a child will develop this disease and, and require insulin for the rest of their life. So we knew there was a strong genetic link and um, we've been trying to understand how that gene leads to an immune system that attacks um, the pancreas. And so we've been doing that work over the years and we're part of uh, groups that have developed ways to predict who's gonna get type one diabetes. That's based on genes and blood tests. So now if a family has one child with type one diabetes, we can actually help them know if their other child is at risk. So that that's helpful for scientists to know that, but of course it doesn't help the family if we can't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. But what's become really important is that now not only can we predict who will get type one diabetes before they get it and require insulin, there's actually been a drug approved by the FDA this fall called teplizumab which is approved to treat those people, including children who are at very high risk for type one diabetes. So we can delay or prevent it. Oh, wow. Now that's been the work of many, many people, but it actually means that translation all the way to a therapy. And if we can prevent type one diabetes, that means a child will grow up and not need insulin for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Are you guys working on multiple uh, like projects and diseases or do you guys focus on one thing and say for the next few years, this is what we're doing? You know, we actually uh, look at many diseases. Our focus is on diseases of the immune system. And one of the things that's really important about our approach is that we know that what we learn from one disease, we can apply to another disease. 
And that's important. Patients who have an autoimmune disease know that they may have more than one autoimmune disease, or they may have a family member with another autoimmune disease. Let's say one family member has celiac disease, another has diabetes, and a third has rheumatoid arthritis. We try to learn from that. So we know there are genes that are shared. And we also know that means that by understanding what causes one disease, we can apply that to another. So at BRI, we study multiple diseases, but with the idea of bringing in that knowledge together and synthesizing it so that we can make a discovery apply more broadly than to just one individual case. You mentioned uh, your founder uh, a couple of minutes ago. Can you guys go back to you know, how it all started? And you, know, you guys are massive now and you guys have collaboration you know, globally. Where did it all start out? Yeah, so we started out here at the corner of Ninth and Seneca uh, in Seattle and with the Virginia Mason Medical Center, which had um, a group of you know outstanding physicians who wanted to understand their patients better. So the hospital created um, the Virginia Mason Research Center so that they the doctors could do research. And then a little over 35 years ago, they decided that they really wanted to focus that research center. So they recruited Jerry Nepom to be the director of the research center. And Jerry's expertise was in what we call immunogenetics, the genes that are involved in creating uh, um, disease. And he was fun, a, a discoverer of some of the genes that were very important in type 1 diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis. So when Jerry established um, the research center, he grew it with people who were experts in genetics and immunology. And then a little over 20 years ago, we moved into a new building um, and it's been renamed the Benaroya Research Institute. We've had wonderful support from the Benaroya family over the years. And And we've been able to grow the Institute from starting with one lab when Jerry became the director of the Research Institute now to the 25 labs we have. Um, And I'm glad you brought this up. We also collaborate really extensively within Seattle and um, across the US. And we lead some major consortiums. We lead um, the Immune Tolerance Network, which is a very large uh, consortium funded by the National Institute of Health to try to determine better ways to treat people with autoimmunity, allergy, and transplant. So we're even bigger than our building. (laughs) When you guys are doing this, I mean, it's huge. You guys, like I said, are massive and have a lot of reach. Is the funding side the more difficult side, or is it finding people who want to do these studies and just get people to help you and put themselves out Uh there? Yeah, that's a really good question. I'd say they're both important parts of what we do. Um, Funding is fundamentally uh, been is always difficult, but one of the things that we are very proud of is the fact that we are seven over seventy percent um, supported by the National Institute of Health. That means we're able to write grant proposals that are very competitive, judged by our peers to be worth funding. Mm-hmm. So we support most of our work that way, but we also require support from the community because the NIH never covers all the costs. So Mm -hmm. philanthropy becomes very important for us as well. You know, outreach to the community and having uh, members of the community participate in our research. We have people who are in clinical trials, but also they uh, donate blood samples for us so that we can study these diseases in the lab. I've been so impressed by the support of the community to be part of these research studies, whether they're about type one diabetes, whether they were COVID vaccine trials or their cancer therapy trials. Um, But it's always important that people think about participating in clinical trials. Um, That's how we get the next therapy, maybe for them, but even more importantly for future generations. Who are you guys really looking for right now? Is it just people donating blood? Is it people that are, you know, have a certain uh, autoimmune disease? What are you guys looking for? Yeah, so that's a great question. We um, have a a pretty broad reach, but I would say some of the areas that are very important for us are families who um, have type 1 diabetes in the family and are interested in screening. We're also interested in people who've just developed diabetes, type 1 diabetes, um, who might want to be in a clinical trial. 
Um, and that's an important thing. Type one diabetes is the insulin dependent form of diabetes, whereas most people have type two diabetes, which is the one we see later in life. Um, so we're looking for always participants in that area. Other diseases and even healthy individuals were really we always have to look at immune health to understand disease. And so we actually are also recruiting healthy individuals who want to donate blood so that we can do research. You know, um, you know, I know you guys get a lot of uh, government funding and stuff like that. So coming back to the community side of it, um, why is why is Seattle still important and at the heart of this organization and this nonprofit and what you guys are doing? Yeah. So Seattle is there's, you know, is is a great uh, community for scientific research and even particularly in immunology. We've had great support from the community through philanthropy. Also, a lot of participants. We have all, over 14,000 participants in our research over the last 20 years. So that's important. And then the other aspect of Seattle that I think um, is great is that we have such a vibrant academic community um, from the University of Washington to the Fred Hutch Cancer Center, Seattle Children's as well as BRI. So it, it's it's a place where we can really do a lot of great work um, as a community and as a team. If uh, someone wants to donate, you know, whether it's their time or money or something like that, uh, where can they reach you guys? Right. So it, the, probably the easiest way to reach us is to go to our website, the Benaroya Research.org. Um, and uh or you could just look us up as the Benaroya Research Institute. Um, and that's a great way to get more information about how to participate in a trial, how to donate. And we also have information on our website about some of the diseases I've talked about today. Awesome. Jane, really appreciate you coming on. Like I said, um, we are very much about supporting Seattle and our communities. So it means a lot that you guys can take a you know a few minutes and just kind of talk about what you guys are doing. Great. Well, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Again, that is Jane Buckner, the president of the Benoria Research Institute here in downtown Seattle. This is Conversations, a public affairs program of this station.